Namaste. We are going to do a blend today between some yin poses and some restorative. And I want to bring up a subject matter that I have been mentioning this week about patterns. In yogic philosophy, it mentions that we need to look through our internal investigation to see what patterns are in place. So when we're going through the physical asanas, especially if it's two-sided, you can pay attention to the patterns that you've developed physically in your body. You can also, through the mindfulness and meditation, discover what the patterns that are you know, occurring or looping through the mind. And then you can do the self-study to discover what emotional response patterns you typically have. And when we learn what these patterns are, they could be karmic patterns. They could be, like I said, physical, emotional, mental patterns. Um, they could be cycles that we get caught or trapped in. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard about the sheep that I believe it was in China at a farm and they have been walking in a circle or were circling for 12 full days. And it was just a weird phenomenon. And I took it as um, kind of a symbology from God and the universe that we're all trapped in this cycle. And uh, I don't know, there's a lot of explanations for it, but I just looked at it as a more symbolic type of meaning. I wanted to share a quote uh, that I saw the other day. Sorry, I had it pulled up and then my phone changed it. Um, one of my students actually posted this quote the other day, and she's really struggling with some, you know, personal things that have been affecting her um, through trauma. And it's these regurgitating thoughts or ideas or beliefs about herself that she's facing. And she shared that post, but because it's so personal, even though she posted it for the world, I don't want to share that piece of it. I just want to share the quote. When a pattern is coming to an end, especially if it's been held in your body for a long time. That's also when you might face fear and a lot of resistance because being set free from this is so uncomfortable and unsettling and can sometimes even feel unsafe because we're used to playing out what we always know. And I wanted to bring that up because that quote really struck me, not just from her personal post, but from just listening to an astrologer talk about um, how the month of December is going to be. And here we are on December 1st meeting today. And um, they were saying the, the stories within the stars for this month is that regurgitation or that resurfacing of the patterns that we are needing to break or be set free from. So for her, I feel like she was very intuitive and perceptive discovering this on her own when this is kind of what's showing up in the universe. So for today's practice, like every yoga practice, we're going to go internal and we're going to discover what some of these patterns or cycles or habits might be for us. And the final thing I'll say with the subject matter is science has discovered it takes 21 days to either create or to break a habit. So just because we discover what it is today on the mat or tomorrow or yesterday, it really takes discipline and focus for at least 21 days for it to take effect. So with that being said, let's meet on the mat. <laughs> Look at here. Ringo's already taken over. <laughs> All right, Ringo, it's my turn. All right, let's start sitting up and breathing. Okay. Now, when you're sitting up and breathing, go ahead and take your hands down to rest on your lap. Close your eyes. Sitting up nice and tall. And if you struggle sitting this way, bring a bolster or a blanket or a pillow to sit on. Now 
And go ahead and drop inside once you get settled. Notice what you're bringing to the mat with you today. Notice what's showing up in your body. What's being presented in your mind or surfacing in your heart. Take deep breaths, forming an intimate relationship with your breath, controlling it, observing it, appreciating it. Now slowly and gently begin to open up your eyes. I feel like I need to sit on something. So excuse me just a moment. You don't have to be, but I just felt like I needed it for my low back. We're gonna extend the arms down beside the body, like an A-frame position. And what I want you to do is to take that left arm behind your back. When you take that left arm behind the back, go ahead and drip the right ear down towards the right shoulder. Close the eyes. And experience the stretch on the side of the neck, the top of the shoulder. The thread may or may not feel very tense or tight, but if it does, this is a good move on your part. Keep breathing well, because tension in this area can form tension headaches or migraine headaches. Tilt the chin and your gaze down towards the right shoulder. Breathe in this other nook of the neck. Inhale, lift the head casually back up. Exhale, lower the left ear to the left shoulder. And feel the difference. Continue to breathe in and out through the nose. And slowly turn your drishti and chin down to look beyond your left shoulder. And then sink the chin towards your chest, bowing your head. Inhale, lift the head back to center and take that right arm behind your back and send your left arm down in the A-frame position and lower the left ear toward the left shoulder. Again, observing the difference, but without passing any judgment. And then turning the chin and gaze down to the left shoulder. Inhale, lift the head back up. Exhale, drape the right ear towards the right shoulder. There may be increased or decreased sensation. And then turn the gaze and chin down beyond the right shoulder. And then sink the chin to the chest. Inhale, lift the head up. And then exhale, remove that back hand and bring your hands to prayer position. Lace the fingers up on the inhale 
Extend your palms forward on your exhale. Inhale, lift the arms overhead. Pause here to feel the elongation, not only in your spine, in your back body, but in your side body, in your front body. Notice the navel drawing in and up towards your heart. Clear the breath. Breathing slowly and smoothly in and out through the nose. And then as you exhale, release your hands. Keep the wrist flat. Reach the arms out to either side of the room. And on your exhale, hook your left arm underneath your right. Now the back of the hands may not touch but they might meet fingertips to back a hand, or you may be able to intertwine all the way up, bringing the fingertips of one hand into the palm of the other. This is Eagle Arms, Garadasan. Inhale, lift the fingertips more skyward. And as you exhale, drop the arms in towards your chest. All right, release the arms, stack onto the right hand, and you're going to bow your head and let your left arm drape down and in front of your chest. You're just ready, let, allowing the arm to hang loose and limp. Soften your jaw. Facial muscles. And then inhale, use that left shoulder to slowly draw yourself back to center and then push the heel of the hands away from you again. Hook your right arm underneath your left for Gavardasana arms. Remember the hands may or may not meet, dependent on your body, your experiences. Once you intertwine, close the eyes. And plugging in a positive phrase or affirmation. At the center of life storms, I choose to remain calm and serene. Inhale, lift the fingertips up. Exhale, drop the elbows low. And then release the arm, stack onto your left hand, and then allow that right shoulder to pour over, draping the arm down and the head down. And then take another couple more breaths. And then pulling in through the navel, pulling back with that right shoulder to casually lift back to center. All right, we're gonna take the hands together behind the back. So you're bringing the fingertips to meet at the lower base. And that could potentially be all that you can do. Once you get the fingertips together, you might be able to wiggle or swim or inchworm the palms a little higher 
maybe the thumbs, base of the knuckles, or palms join and meet to reverse namaste hands. I know that can be challenging. So if it's too much, you can always crisscross your arms. But from here, we're gonna lift the sternum, draw the elbows back a bit, and then breathe into the front of your chest. One more. So right now we're just working on opening up the neck, the shoulders, the chest, really the upper body. And then slip the hands down and rotate your wrist if you were in reverse prayer hands. All right, now come away from the bolster. However, we're warming up the upper body for a back bend that we can restore in so that bolster can be set behind you. Before we take that rest restoration, we're gonna bend the knee, separate the feet wide. We're gonna do a few cat cows. So as you duck your head and pull the heart and shin through and up, your shoulders actually crank back towards the spine. As you exhale, the belly pulls in, the arms straighten out. Then you tuck the chin to the chest. So the inhale is moving us through for a little back bend. Seated cow. And the out breath takes us into seated cat stretch. On the inhale, the knees can widen as you roll through. And as you exhale, as you pull back, the knees will narrow. Let's do one more. And then inhale, sit upright, lower the left shoulder inside the knee and reach that right hand out and up so you're taking a twist. Now from this twist, we're not gonna bind the arms today. I would rather you push this left arm into the left thigh and notice how you can rotate better in your twist. You can revolve more through your belly, chest. You can gaze back towards the hand, but it may be too much with that extra rotation. And as you exhale, lower it down. And then we can kind of slide the right shoulder inside the right knee, pick up the left arm, reach it out. And, up. and then to go deeper, push that right arm into your thigh and see if you can open into the twist more. And if you can't quite look towards your hand in the hosta drishti, then just look sharply through the left corner of the eyes. And exhale release. All right, if you need a blanket underneath your knees, you can bring that in. Otherwise, I know I have a round bolster, but you can use the rectangular ones. We're going to roll over the prop, fan the arms out, palms open, and close the eyes. Hopefully, your shoulders are prepared to soften. But I want you to pay attention in this moment to your low back. Because if it feels a little wound up, sometimes it's helpful to slide the feet wider apart. And if it's still uncomfortable, you may want to simply bend the knees and do a little slight tuck of the tailbone. Check in to see what you need, what your body craves.
And then we're going to be a little reflective because meditation is not always just clearing and blanking the mind. We can also be reflective or contemplative. So what we're going to be contemplative about in this pose is considering what our morning routine is made up of. We are all habitual creatures. So what are the first few things you do when you wake up? And as you're going through the list, moving through that routine in your mind, consider if anything has become a habit that you need to release. For instance, if you use your phone at your bedside table for your alarm, do you turn it on and immediately go to the news? Do you immediately await for messages? Or do you get up and start your day? We're not looking at this for any judgment being passed simply broadening our landscape of awareness and considering is there something that needs to be tweaked or changed regarding our morning routine. Now let those thoughts subside. Come back to your breath. Connect to the wave of the breath. And we're going to do three short in-breaths followed by a long out-breath for some pranayama work. I'll instruct you through it. Short in-breath, pause. Short in-breath, pause. Short in-breath, pause. And take a long out-breath. Short in breath, pause, short in breath, pause, short in breath, pause, and take a long out breath. Short in breath, fill it from the pubic bone to the wrist, short in breath, fill it, fill up the cavity of the chest, short inhale, fill it, lift the collarbones, and take a long out breath. Short in breath, fill up a third of the lung. Short in breath, two thirds of the lung. Short in breath, full capacity. And exhale, let it all go. On your next in breath, slide the feet back so the knees are bent, but the feet are wide apart. And let your knees drop off to the right. Windshield wipe twist. Oh. 
hold and breathe. Inhale, turn the knees up. Exhale, drape them to the other side. Hold and breathe. On your next in-breath, lift the knees to center. And as you exhale, come up out of that position. Slide that bolster away. Sit with your left leg straight, your right knee bent, hip open with the foot connecting to the inside of your knee. Remember, if you have an unhealthy back, you're gonna keep the foot flex, the back straight as you fold, otherwise we'll begin. So lift the arms up overhead. And if you wanna begin, think about rounding your back and sending yourself down like a tumbleweed. Maybe adding in a little bit of motion before settling into stillness. So remember, you're not looking to be anywhere in particular. You're paying attention to what you're sensing inside. Breathing out any and all stress, worry, tension, toxins away. Turning the palms over, pushing into the floor with your hands and slowly driving yourself back up. And when you come back up, separate the left foot away from the mat, pull the right heel closer, lift up energetically, same approach. So if you need to flex the foot and maintain a straight back to keep it active, that's okay. If you want to be more yin, relax the leg, soften the knee, and it's okay to round down to your edge of flexibility. This is half dragonfly. And 
Remember, you can always use props to stack on, for instance. You can have your bolster in front. You can even lean over it like this. Couple more breaths. Inhale, stack on the hands, slowly back up. And now straighten your right leg down the length of the mat and that left foot can come over for half butterfly. Inhale the arms up. Exhale, flow down. Rounding out if you have a healthy back. And it's even okay in yen if the knee wants to pop up a little bit away from the floor. If we were being active, or if you are choosing to be active, you would plant the back of the thigh so it's not popping up and push out through the heel of the foot. Remember, we're letting go physically in this pose. And I also want you to let go of using any of your thoughts for entertainment purposes. Be more entranced by your breath. Dedicating your attention to it for this hour. Flip and stand on your hands, walk them back, relift your torso, and slide your right foot out and your left foot in. Lift up energetically at first. Again, active or passive on the approach. If you want to be more yen, you can collapse down. Without alignment or form. If you need it active, you want to think about alignment and form. 
So the intentions of each approach is so different. But they both have benefits. Notice even your emotional responses to certain poses, especially in the areas where we might feel weak or inflexible versus the poses where we feel stronger or more flexible. And let's go ahead and walk the hands back. And this is where we're going to move into a yin slash restorative pose. I'm going to let you choose today. So you could either do the butterfly pose with the feet farther out and a nice diamond shape between the legs, or you can take dragonfly so the legs are split. But what we'll do is use the props. Now, of course, you can use... I I mean, stone hinge is kind of nice for this one because you can put your prayer hands up like this or like this. But you could also, if you don't want to go that low and you don't really want to feel so much sensation, you're just opening up the energy, maybe angle the bolster. I'm going to do it this way and just let my hands rest on the floor. Take it to the depth of your liking. And take the leg position of your life, butterfly or dragonfly. We've done a half of each. And now I'm allowing you to practice a fuller expression on its own.
Take three more breaths. And let's gently pull back from that pose. Once you pull back from that pose, you're going to line up your legs on the mat again, bending the right knee. And we're going to keep this right knee bent and we're going to hold it with the left arm. As you inhale, flex the left ankle, elevate the right hand, and slowly turn to the right and lower the hand to the floor behind your back. Exhale, just unwind, removing that back hand, slide your right leg out. Your left foot in. We're staying on the ground today, if you notice. <laughs> right arm circles around the knee. Left arm reaches overhead. And then spin your torso to the left. Taking the twist the opposite direction. Us twisting and bringing that thigh to the belly can also operate with some good compression. And exhale and release. All right, you're going to want your bolster uh, for Shavasana, but before we go there, we're going to do a flow on our back. So lie down on your back, start with knees bent. And then on your inhale, you're gonna spread, splay your arms out like a T and float the feet in the air for like a passive, more waterfall pose. As you exhale, you're gonna separate the feet wide. As you inhale, you pull them back together. And as you exhale, hug them in towards the belly and chest. So we're going to flow that way a few more rounds. Inhale, feet lift, arms open. Exhale, separate the feet. Inhale, bring them together. And exhale, when release pose. Again, inhale, waterfall. Exhale, supine variation of Konasana. Inhale back to this simple waterfall and exhale to wind release. All right, on this round, we're going to hold them a little bit longer individually. So inhale, waterfall. Continue to breathe in and out through the nose. And the feet can stay somewhat relaxed. You don't need to point or flex in any particular way. Try not to angle the feet towards the face though. Try to keep the ankles more or less over the hips or ahead, meaning uh, away from your face. Now separate the feet. Pause here. This one gets a little tough with gravity. We're not going to hold it as long as the yin pose would be. Just a couple more breaths. And then feet line back up. And then exhale, go ahead and come in, knees to chest. Now we're gonna have a longer hold here. So close your eyes, 
I meant to do this when we were in that previous restorative pose. Now I want you to reflect on your daily routine. What has become habit? And we can have good habits, right? You have a, a good habit of showing up here to do yoga on Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays at 11 a.m. But you may notice there's something that may lean in the negative. Maybe you get lost on social media and you lose an hour of time that could have been productive. Maybe your scheduling with lunch is way off. I'm guilty of that. I'm guilty of working nonstop to like 2 or 2.30 and then I eat. And really and truly the sun is at its brightest between 12 and 2. And the inner sun or the inner fire of our digestion works the best during that same time frame. So if you're eating between 12 and 2, you know you're working in sync with nature. Again, this is not to be too analytical or judgmental, just noticing. Now let's take some cleansing breaths to blow those thoughts away. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Exhale through the mouth. <laughs> Ringo did it with us. Breathing in. Breathing out. One more. Land your feet. Then crisscross left ankle over the right knee. Pick up the right foot. And I just want you to know, if you kept your right foot on the floor, this is the pose. If you just lift the foot in the air, you're in it. If you want to go a little deeper, right? That's always an option. That's when we leave the hands behind the leg and start to draw closer. but it's not always necessary. Continue to close your eyes. Keep checking in. And release. Stand the left foot back to the floor. Cross the right ankle over the left knee. Remember, you can stay put. You can float the left foot. Or you can draw in.
and release. You're ready for Shavasana. So I would suggest, I would suggest this. I know I don't have a rectangular bolster with me, but you know how you can turn the rectangular bolster up so it's narrow and tall and long across your mat. It's the best way I know how to describe it right now. If you tuck that underneath your knees and let it stand up, then your feet can potentially touch the floor. And that's the idea to keep the feet grounded. I think I can do something similar with the round one. Yeah, I did. Okay, see how I did the round one? Same way with the rectangular, but this way the feet stay connected to the floor. And I would like you to have your hands on your abdomen unless it's uncomfortable. Before you drift away too much, I want you to consider after you get settled, the routine or habit you have for the evening before you go to sleep. Are you in the habit of just vegging out in front of the TV every night? That's not a judgment. There's nothing wrong with TV. There's nothing wrong with having entertainment. Or maybe it's something different than that. And they get no judgment. Just awareness on if any of these patterns or habits could potentially change or shift to make your life better, to make you feel better. And all we're doing is taking a mental note. Then we're going to do a little pranayama to release those thoughts, to come back and rest. And so we're going to expel the tongue. And it's like we're panting. Sometimes we do this in an active pose. So your hands are on your belly. You're going to find it as you pant out, the belly pumps in. Let's begin. Release, lubricate the throat, let it salivate and swallow. We're going to do it again. Close the mouth, let it salivate. When your mouth moistens up, Swallow, lubricate the throat. And then allow the breath to be more organic. And then affirm mentally within, bones, muscles, movement, I surrender now. Anxiety, elation, depression, any and all turning thoughts, I now give over into the hands of peace. Peace, be still, be still, and know that I am.
when you're ready, deepen the flow of your breath. Once you do so, stretch the arms overhead. Push the bolster forward or roll it forward and then hug your knees in. Roll from side to side across your back. Turning over one. Coming up to take a seat. Sitting. Joining the palms together to prayer. Om. Om. We all walk away from this practice being inspired from our yoga to look inward, to look and really study what our patterns and habits are. Changing the ones that need to be changed, embracing the ones that are serving as well. And then remembering as we depart from the mat, our yoga continues. Om Shanti 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 Namaste. Namaste.